Hi, this is Russ with Devoted Golfer TV. I'm here with Mondaire Latiri. Did I get it yes. right? Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. it right. Yeah, well, hey, good to have nice you with us this year again. again. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. How have you been? All right? Yeah, not too bad. Good, yeah. good, good, it's good, been good, a, good. It's good. been kind good. of a good year. Good. Well, yeah. thank you for visiting again. Yeah. All right. So we're going to spend a little time today walking through a few more pieces sure, of equipment. Sure, sure. Let's and do for that. for those people that don't know, this is the guy that makes most of the equipment that's yes, in all well, of the golf you. club shops. All humbly. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah. Humbly yours, mom there, yes. Yeah. Golf mechanics. Yeah. So <clears throat> you invent all of this stuff? I invent all of this. Yeah. I've been doing it for the last 27 years. Hopefully I'll keep on doing it for a little while longer. Yeah. But yeah. actually, you know, it's surprising. You look through the Goldsmith catalogs back in 92, 93, that was nothing. Yeah. And then when I started working with Tom, suddenly we started pining up all those inventions. Yeah. But I have to give credit to the club makers because all my ideas always start with one of our club maker friends somewhere out there. Yeah. You know, they have a stroke of this. genius. Yeah, yeah. And then I just have to take it over and turn their dreams into reality. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like they say, I can be responsible for everything. Yeah. Literally, I look around I my shop and yeah. I say, oh, there's my shaft puller and there's yeah. my... MOI machine, and there's my yes, that's uh, correct. You know, there's my swing weight machine, and there's yeah. my sander, and my other yeah, sander, yeah, and my saw, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. my torque measuring instrument, yeah, and my yeah. deflection instrument that you don't that, make yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, don't make anymore. Yeah, yes, yeah. we have the new Ervation the EI and, machine. Yes, and my that's frequency correct. machine. And, yes, yes. And yes. every place I look, there's one of your machines. Yeah. Well, I try to innovate, and I try to stay ahead of your needs, and you know, I take it from there, really. Yeah. You know, and uh, like I say, we stay focused on what the club making community needs yeah. and I design and will engineer and manufacture just to deliver that level of performance and that utility that club makers need yeah and you know, so it's always an on, it's always an ongoing process yeah. And like they say, after a career of 25 years, there is always room for a do-over yeah. and a new redesign, a new upgrade kit and so forth. So yeah. hopefully I'll keep on doing it for a while longer. So All let's right. go take a look at some okay. of your swing sure. light machines. All right. Okay, well, uh, I was working recently on a new program for one of our major OEM customers. Mm -hmm. And after finishing the design, I was looking at the scanner. I said, well, you know, I designed something 20 years ago that looked like this. Yeah. Let me see if I can do a, a, a redo. And the reason for that I was we designed mechanical swing weight scales, you know, with the moving fulcrum and the sliding weight and the scale. I got one and of those. you know, yeah, mm -hmm. and the truth is that these scales today, you know, take a tremendous amount of time to produce you know mm -hmm. you have to wait you know every single component you have to add them up you yeah, have to yeah. screw the parts together and then you have to calibrate and it takes really the best part of 20 to 30 minutes to get a swing weight scale a mechanical swing weight scale just right yeah. and I say you know we can't really transfer the cost to the club makers because they look at it it's a mechanical scale and it's not as valuable as digital and I say it would probably be easier for me to stop make, making mechanical scan and I produce a digital scale, but yeah. hold on a second. Let me see if I can do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this fulcrumless yeah. swing weight scale, and as you and can see, it's a very right simple here. one yeah. right here, a very compact model which compared to this scale is basically half the size and it has no moving part. So as I said, you know, after I, I, I looked at it, I said, we certainly need a digital swing weight scale that's going to replace the mechanical ones mm -hmm. without adding to the burden of a beginning club maker. You know, yeah. not someone who is a pro, but a DIYer that needs the precision and right. still needs the low cost because they are at the early days and they don't really know whether they're going to like to stay in club making or not. So I came up with this little swing weight scale that has no moving parts or whatsoever. It's what a, a full chromless swing weight scale yeah. and it functions just like a normal one and what I did you know on this particular design you know all of us have phone chargers and Android yeah, so yeah. this machine works directly you know from your Android phone charger Ah. So it's totally different. You don't need an adapter. You don't need to buy anything. You just use your phone or your battery pack to power it up, and you can carry it anywhere you want. 
and it doesn't come with added cost. And a smaller environmental footprint because fewer parts to machine, fewer parts to yeah, ship, yeah. a lighter weight. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I'm going to make this my super economy model, I you know, it. just to, to welcome yeah. in new club makers into yeah. the sport. Yeah, I was thinking, could I charge my cell phone off of it? Uh, but no, you but can, the answer is no, I can't. No, no, you can. Because but you you're can, using the whole transformer to power this up. Yeah, you can power it up. But your yeah. phone is always charged anyway, so you can, you know, strip yeah. one or the other. Yeah, yeah. But it can be handy if you don't have power, if you are out there in the field. You can use basically, you know, your, your battery pack, you yeah. know, to, uh, yeah. to power it up. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so, so it don't have any moving parts. Yeah, it has no I moving don't have parts. To worry it, about it will do swing weights and it will do component weights, you know, yeah. two very basic functions, mm -hmm. and it will do it to the precision of half a swing weight and one gram increment, which I think for most DIY club makers is more than enough precision. Yeah. Certainly much better than a mechanical scale, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, you know, right. I like the fact that I've got a little digital readout because... Well, it has the readout, it simplifies things, Because I it's have my reading fiddly. contacts in, you have your reading glasses exactly. on, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we get you mold, aren't we? You know, yeah, it's a no-fiddle system, you know, yeah. just plug and play. Yeah, I love it. All right, so, so we so, have this So we've system, got a yeah. little more... And now volume. we have something a little bit more complex, yeah. which we call the MPS, mm -hmm. which is mo a mass property system for golf clubs. So basically, assuming that I have a, a golf club here, mm -hmm. all you need to do to capture all the measurements of this golf club is to put it on this digital swing weight scale. All so the measurements will, yeah, meaning? Yes, it will calculate, it will measure the swing weight. Okay. It will measure the total weight. Mm -hmm. It will measure the balance point of the club. I love it. It will also measure the length. Okay. If you add in our optional laser, okay. but more importantly, you know, for the big OEMs that produce hundreds of clubs, you know, every mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. you have an automatic swing weight calculation mode. So you put in your target swing weight, like you want a D zero, yeah. and yeah. as you put your club in there, it will tell you, you know, add one gram or one, add two grams, and you add your weight, and you are right on target. So we are trying to help you know, OEM achieve a better level of consistency. Mm -hmm. And if they can do that on a production line, the golf will also benefit because now string weight is most, more consistent and it's not all over the place. Mm -hmm. And one extra thing that we did with the swing weight scale is totally networkable. You can plug it onto a network so you mm -hmm. can have the internet of things. So if you have a production line with multiple instruments, mm -hmm. you can put them on the same network or if you want, you can use a barcode printer. Yeah, yeah. Now, because you asked me about this particular design here in Japan where, you know, the sale of secondhand clubs is very prevalent, yeah. they will use these machines to barcode all the old golf clubs. So you put the golf clubs on the machine, Yeah. you know, it will measure the length, total weight, swing weight, and then it will print a little label which you can put onto the grip and move it. So your clubs, when they are on the rack, yeah. they would already have all the specifications attached to them. So for someone who is selling hundreds of clubs a month, mm -hmm. it does pay to have one instrument that does that and you don't have to check, excuse me sir, yeah. what's my yeah. swing weight, what's the so specification I, so I pick for this that club? So club up off the rack yes. and all of that information and is you sitting have, here for it's me. sitting right there because you measured and you put in your little barcode printer. Yeah, what a okay. great idea. Well, it does work. It's yeah. the exegesis of the modern world. Yeah. Everything has to be tagged. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Let's move over to one of your other benches sure. here. Sure. The other day when I was in here, yes. you showed me the reversed shaft yeah. puller. Trust, yes, exactly. Reverse okay. trust. Reverse. Yeah, and the reason for that, we call it the reverse trust, because this shaft puller works backwards. I Normally, on a conventional shaft puller, right. you know, the shaft remains stationary and, and it's I the head that's the actually head. moving, yeah, you yeah, are pulling. Yeah, yeah. But this one, you know, works the opposite. The head stays stationary and it's the shaft that's moving backward. Ah. And the reason we do this, you know, if you ever got stranded in a patch of sand with your car, yeah. you really cannot move forward because the whole weight is shifted forward and you are just merely digging into the sand. Yeah. But if you put your car into reverse, it has a lower gearing, yeah. okay, and the, the, uh, and the trunk of the car is much lighter. So it's much easier to walk out of the sand, to drive out of the sand in reverse than you trying to go forward. Here on this shaft puller, we have exactly the same phenomenon. We are transferring the uh, the load, you know, from the hosel. We are moving it to transferring it to the back of the shaft. Ah. So as you extract, 
first of all, you know, the clamp, the shaft is being clamped tighter and tighter because yeah. it's conical right. and it gets into a larger diameter. So like you are trying to gotcha. restrict yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So the shaft doesn't slip. Yeah, okay. you're so, so Yeah, that. you're tightening. Yeah. So the higher the load, the tighter, the more secure the shaft is. Uh -huh. This is the number one benefit. Yeah. Now, because the we are using, you know, what you would call, you know, a uh, recirculated ball bearing thread, mm -hmm. the ramp is normally inversed for zero friction. You have get very, very little friction. Mm -hmm. So by recirculating the ball bearing backward, we are exactly having that reverse trust, trust effect mm -hmm. where we are demultiplying the torque and we are getting a huge mechanical advantage that's almost like 21% higher than anything you would experience before. And it helps compress the 1400 pound spring we have inside here. Mm -hmm. So that when you hit up that club, as soon as the epoxy gives in, the head will pop out and you can save that shaft. Ah. And this would be true, you know, for adapters, you know, it would be true, you know, for the super lightweight shaft. So working with a reverse thrust puller has its benefit. So let me put this shaft sure. in here Go ahead. and see yeah. what it looks like. All right. I'm not going to load so it up. So you see you have the hosel, the hosel yeah. plate, you know, that matches. We have a ferrule here. Yeah. But for argument's sake, we're just going to say yeah. that it's, uh, it's there. The so ferrule. you tighten. Yeah. And basically what you do to compress the spring, you know, you just ratchet the mechanism backward. Yeah. Okay. And you turn and you are loading the spring. You can see there yeah, that it's yeah. getting get tighter it. and yeah. tighter. Bye -bye and then yeah. you hold and you heat. So now yeah. you don't have to go all over the place. You apply punctual heat on the hosel and as soon as the help pop out, that's it. You crank it up and you are done. And guess what? It's dropping on the bench. And it's dropping on the bench, exactly. So you can put, the, it, you yeah, can put yeah. your glove right there, you know, a hot fa your fabric, you know, to protect from the heat. And it does a very, very good job at that. So, you know, it's a slightly different concept because, like I said, shafts are getting very de very delicate. Houses are getting difficult. You are talking you know, about you know what pieces I really, of jewelry. You know really hate? I, you yeah. know, I hate that 40-gram shaft that I overcrank on, and I hear that. Well, it does happen. At least with this, you are <laughs> not compressing the shaft. Yeah. You are merely restricting it. Yeah. So there is a benefit. Like, yeah. if you are a traditionalist, a purist, maybe this thing would be like anathema. This doesn't work normally but if you have a progressive mind you are working with high-tech equipment all the time yeah. and you have to be careful this shaft puller will answer the call that's you know, I for don't sure use this. oh it's handy come on yeah, everyone yeah. knows no, how to crank. Use yeah? i use a, a like a battery operated Oh. Electric drill. Okay. Right? That, uh, and I can go, <laughs> vroom, vroom, right? You're like quick ones, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have this right. sitting right on the edge of the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't agree. even have to hold on to the drill. The yeah, you don't have the to. drill yeah, yeah, holds yeah. itself. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, you know, these I are all tricks. I can work really, really fast These are these a club maker's yeah. tricks, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so you, 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 you have this one. So it's one of those little things that makes life easier for club makers. Yeah. We did bang that up a little oh, bit. Oh, no, that's okay. Don't worry. Okay, it's so only a why, wish on why do club. I see a tennis ah, racket? Okay, well, there. basically, you know, a few years ago, you know, I was approached by a, a tennis scientist, and he said, we found your MOI scale, yeah. and we would like you to modify it for us so we can do tennis racket. And I say, certainly, I can do that. And that gentleman, his name is Rod Cross. You know, he's with the ADP. So I designed the first generation machine mm -hmm. and it worked great. So I've been working with Wilson for the past few years. Yeah. And I also designed the MOI machines for them. So, so this, this is year, an MOI machine. It's an MOI machine for, for tennis, tennis rackets. rackets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so we are transferring golf technology to tennis. In tennis, they call MOI swing weight. And they apply it, you know, in a slightly different manner than ours. Yeah, but the yeah. technology is the same, so they can MOI match racket. The same physics principle also apply, whether it's a golf stick or a tennis racket yeah, or yeah. a badminton racket. The technology is the same because physics is there. You know, you are trying Nin to put an object into ninety-eight percent of the golf clubs that I build. Yes, are MOI, are MOI matched. Yeah. Well, it's equally important that it's done with a tennis racket because you are dealing with the same kind of flow, the same kind of low motions, yeah, and yeah. the dynamics are exactly identical. Obviously, the proportion, the scale, the size is different. It's different, right? But the same technology is very the same. Yeah, Dynamic one thing weight. is that 
you know, like Ronnie said, Mondera, I'm really tired of having to torque the knob screw. Can you come up with something nicer? So I designed this new nifty ah. mechanism. So no you put this I couldn't in there. get it out of there when I you tried know, earlier. Yes, yeah. exactly. So you put it in, it works just like a normal, you know, uh, MOI string weight scale. And you can see, you know, it gives you your readings, you know, yeah. and it works great. So this is how golf can change things around us, how we transfer technology to other sports. Yeah. So this year I wanted to bring it in because this is the first time that the organizers have mashed up tennis and golf together along with textile. Oh. And from now on, hopefully, we will have the tennis on one side of the hall and the golfing industry on the other side of the hall, and I'll be in between. Oh. I really look forward like to it. Idea. So yeah, for this yeah. opportunity, I thought I certainly need to show the machine, and we did get interest for it. So that's great news for me. Yeah, yeah, good. Let's go look at putter bending. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so we've moved over to the putter bending yes, machine. I get yes. more and more people coming into me okay. that want to have their putters adjusted. Yes. And I don't have the All digital right. version of this. Mine is a little bit older, well, but it works just fine. Digital is practical, especially yeah, that yeah. you have this. You always yeah. come down to this. Right. Okay, well, you know, the advantage of digital is speed, mm -hmm. you know, and precision. You know, it's precise. You measure every time you get, give or ten a tenth of a degree. Right. You know, so instead of having to focus on the reading, you focus on your setup, you focus on your bending, mm -hmm. and you do less worrying about your measurement because you know that it's displayed right there in front of you. Now, last year, I introduced you to the same machine, mm -hmm. and I introduced you to the bend you, as the measure as you bend. You know, you hook right. up your, you clip your shaft, yeah, yeah. and you do your adjustment, and you can see it. But this year, I had a very interesting challenge. You know, people are asking, I have a digital machine. How do I calibrate it? I have an old bending gauge. How do I make sure that the readings are correct? I've banged it for so many years, and I'm really starting to doubt that it's accurate and say, well, this is an interesting problem. Yeah. I could address it doing two different things. I could say, get a club, have its reference, put it on a line measuring gauge, and make sure that every time you measure, you get the same measurement. Yeah. Or yeah. alternatively, I would make, I would produce a universal gauge, which you could use on almost any part of bending machine. It's CNC machine, comes with two rods, yeah. you know, for right hand and left hand, and you have your measurement. Okay. So I produce this series of gauges, you know, for butter bending gauges, for line loft bending right. gauges. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, you take this gauge, you know, that's been accurately machined for right. you, you know, you have all the measurements on it. Yeah. You place it onto your machine, mm -hmm. you know, and you take your reading to ensure that actually it is correct. So in this particular case, I'm going to clamp the, uh, the gauge here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to take my measurement, okay, and I will verify, oh, excuse me, and I'll verify that I'm getting the same reading. So in this particular instance, you have 66 and a half, 10 degree of loft, uh -huh. okay, because I didn't calibrate the machine correctly. So all the measurements do actually have to correspond, okay? So in this particular case, now we can see we have our measurements right here, you know, with a clamp as you measure. Right. Feature like this, and you can see 69.9, and the loft angle is about three degrees, which uh -huh. is correspond exactly to what we have on the gauge here. Yeah. I also produced a series of gauges which look more like a flattened iron. Yeah. And yeah. this is what you would use on your bending gauge. So the same principle, you have your groove line here. Mm -hmm. You put this into your machine. Mm -hmm. and you make sure that you get the same spec. If you don't, you know, you can tweak your machine, you can uh, untighten the bolts, retighten the bolts, readjust yeah, it yeah. so it goes back into square again. Okay. So this is one of the challenges I had this year and I had I so thought I would make a solution for it yeah. that would work not just across golf mechanics products, mm -hmm. but with all other machines on the market as well. You ah, know, so it's not a question yeah, of yeah. me doing the right thing for us or us against, you know, which machine is more accurate. Yeah. All machines should read the same regardless of the operator. So I can actually take this and put it into my loft and lie machine. You can do that, exactly. Right. Okay. And, and make sure that my loft and lie table gauge Reads is exactly those measurements, yes. Supposed to. Yeah. All right, you yeah. know, those measurements can also be, be used on a measuring gauge itself. Okay, so I would recommend that any club maker who's 
who has some um, some suspicion about the accuracy of their machine. They no mm -hmm. longer feel comfortable with the kind of reading that they get. You know, you don't want to drive doubt into your mind and the mind of the customer. You make sure that your instruments are always performing at its best, and yep. it's also a great way to protect your assets. Right. Yep. Okay, and my so assets are my customers. You're exactly, yeah. but you also need to have the tools of the trade to yeah. keep your customers happy. I do a lot of putter fitting just off this machine. Yes. All those putters made by Bertie Nardi, you know, Bobby Gray, Saudi yeah, Say, yeah. and what have you, all these putters have become pieces of jewelry. They are no more, you know, implements to play golf but they are actually pieces of jewelry. If you look at the amount of manpower that these putters take in terms of machining and finishing, designing, yep, yep. you know, it's almost like a crime taking a putter, throwing it into any putter machine and say, well, I'm going to adjust yeah, it. Yeah. We made sure that, you know, all the components here on this machine can be easily replaced ah. so you can have some nice soft plastics. Yeah. You know, you can remove them so you can use brass. This you know, new. instead this of a plastic, yeah, yeah this yeah. is new. You see the clamp can be easily removed. Yeah. And we do all this to prevent that your putter get banged, nicked, scratched, damaged while you are trying right. to perform a simple bending or measuring operation on it. So you have this small improvement here. The pads can be changed. You have the, um, you know, uh, measure as you bend so right. you don't overshoot your, your target lie, your target lop. Because you know, let's face it. You know, metallurgy has evolved so much over the, the over the few years that you have memory alloys. You know, you bend them; they're gonna come back. You have some alloys that right. are have a very uh, very high strain rate, so you strain them. You know, the spring rate seems to be there, and then suddenly they give up on you, and you overshoot, and you can never bring it back without breaking it. Yep. So the metallurgy of club head these days, and club makers have to realize this, that it has changed dramatically so what used to be good with 17 4 steel or some other carbon steel nowadays you know step carefully you know make sure that your equipment gives you you know the advantage of being able to work that club without actually destroying it you know so being very careful and yep. you need good equipment for that so you know what was designed 30 years ago is no longer really valid now, like they say, please do step carefully with whatever you want to do with these modern designs. The number of people that come in for for just a putter fitting yes. makes this almost an essential tool for every club shop. It is an essential tool. Now, I have to say this. I receive a lot of club makers. You know, they ask me personally, Monday, what would you recommend? I want a bending gauge that do it all. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can have a bending gauge that do it all but it's going to do all of this job very badly. You know, yeah, it's going to yeah. be very mediocre. Yeah. You know, because you have different size putters, you know, you have different size woods. You, you know, so it's better to specialize, you know, putters for putters, irons for irons, iron mm -hmm. and hybrids that is still acceptable because a lot of the hybrids are just modified irons. So you could do that on an iron bending gauge, but putting an expensive putter on, on something that was designed for irons just doesn't cut muster anymore. It's yeah. no it's no longer acceptable. And, and I'm if not, you're gonna and I'm do, not moving putters very much, you know, I'm moving. Yeah, it's very little. Bit. So you know you are trying to crack a nut with a sledgehammer. Yeah. You know, yeah. Leather, you know, we have different putter bending machines, they come at different price range. Yep. So please I encourage you, you don't have to buy the ultimate Mm -hmm. Buy the minimum acceptable to do a decent job without creating a liability for yourself. Yeah, Somebody yeah. walks in with a $700 putter and yeah. they're going to walk out with a $1,400 $1, in their pocket because that putter has a sentimental value and it can never be replaced. Let's face it, it. Yeah. there is liability in there, so why risk it? Yep. Tools of the trade. Right. Get the right tool to do the right kind of job on the right kind of equipment. Well, thanks so much again well, Ross, for spending thank you. your time with us. Thank you for and, giving uh, me a voice. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, and we will see you next, next year. year, if not yes, sooner. I'll yeah, check yeah. on that. Okay. You know, stay sharp. Okay.